Shalom, shalom. Kahala Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Kakradash, the Mahonest of the Apostles, and Elsevier Milson Ruel, and salutations to the brethren on the four corners of the earth, pushing the word with truth and in sincerity. This I recommend that you with another lesson. Uh, this lesson is basically on the financial woes to come, you know, involved in the RFID chip. You, know, you got guys out there, Nate in general, you know, because it's June, you know, and there is a microchip. Um, he claims that there's no microchip, you know, that the microchip has nothing to do with the mark of the beast. But I, you know, brothers have run into various articles and proof that this world is heading to a castle society. You know, and one of the things that's going to uh, spearhead the castle society are the banks, you know, and, and, the, uh, and the health industry, you know. And they're using this whole cryptocurrency, uh, uh, this whole cryptocurrency wave as a means to transition society away from cash, you know? That's the whole thing with uh, the the Bitcoin. You know, first banks were pushing away from it and they were telling you that the, uh, the cryptocurrency is flawed and it's not going to last and you'll be a fool to invest in it. And now you turn around and you figure out that these, you know, these big banks and institutions are actually investing in it, you know? An example, uh, Chase Bank, you know? Chase Bank was one of the biggest advocates against Bitcoin and come to later find out that they've been investing in it the whole time, you know? And I just want to share something with you, brothers. Um, <clears throat> I was up around 2, 3 in the morning um, scrolling through the news and I seen this on Fortune.com and, you know, in Yahoo, Yahoo Finance that the CEO of Bank of America actually said out of his own mouth that they want a cashless society, you know? And this is the interview that he did with the uh, Fortune's inaugural brainstorm finance conference in New York. So I'm gonna play the video and then I'll hop into the article. How, how do you think that the bank, I know that for example, you have 80,000 fewer employees than you had when you first came in. Um, and you have 36 million, I believe, uh, digital uh, customers. So things have changed substantially, but how, how, how do you see the shape of the industry changing going forward? And will it get disrupted in the same ways that so many advertising, in our case, or so many industries have been fundamentally changed? Well, I think if you think about the major types of technology that people talk about, whether it's voice recognition, the ability to store data and, and find it and have it be accurate, the, the ability of networks to actually move data back and forth, on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and then robotics, all those apply in our industry a lot. And that's how we reduce the size of the company by so much in terms of employee count is was applying technology to all the process procedures. And we're only starting. So you know, if you go to the far ends of the, uh, the reach, Erica, which has only been out for about 13 months, has 7 million people using it. It's had 50 million customer interactions. And so that is a voice-activated artificial intelligence agent. It has 110 systems it touches behind it. It can has to be real, you know, no latency in its dialogue. And it's a pretty fantastic product. And so 7 million people use that. And those kinds of products are going to really change our industry uh, because it changes. People don't need to call us or go in and figure out a, to, uh, a store, et cetera, to ask the question, you know, what's my balance? They can have it at any moment. And then how am I spending my money? They have that. You know, am I spending more than I'm earning? They have that. And they can do it in just that natural language. Because, and then the, the data and the intelligence and the network is what makes it all happen. And so it, these are those five or six trends, and there's many others, are going to change our industry. And But on the other hand, between now and tomorrow this time, 800,000 people will walk in our branches. Right. So it's 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 a high tech high tech business, and you need both to be successful. Yeah, that's a that's a, a, a tough balance to get right, though, isn't it? Because you have put forty three hundred branches still, and, and you're expanding in some high growth areas. You're, you're putting in new branches and closing others in, in yep. some of the the uh, the, the low, slow growth areas. Um, how they do look, you? They look I, a lot different than they yeah. did. You know, in other words, it used to be the most of the activity in the, in the branch twenty years ago was. A person, you know, bringing a piece of paper to deposit it, or bringing a piece of paper to cash it, getting cash over the over the teller line. Now, seventy-five percent of deposits are not gone through the branches. So, what did you replace that with? People giving financial advice. I, I need a power of attorney because I'm a mother sick and I want to help my account. I, I'm getting a mortgage that I've never got one before. Can you help me? So, it's it, it, the the branches that don't look like they used to. There's very few tellers. A lot more automation deployed in them. But more importantly, there's a lot more sales people answering the toughest questions 
And so it's reversed the whole way you have to think about banking. It used to be you pulled the tough questions out and tried to enter them centralized where the expertise was, and you left the easy tasks out. You flip that now because of self-service. Uh, All the tough questions you're pushing out to the furthest nodes. Well, that, 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 because they have to be face-to-face. -face. Right, and that plays into your whole view of growing with your customers right. as their needs grow, as they go from having a, 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 a checking account to having a mortgage to having wealth management, et cetera. Um, but, Brian, millennials, though, may not respond so well to that model. You see a lot of the polling where they don't go to branches, they don't write checks, a lot of the traditional products that you offer don't appeal to them. What are you doing... For example, the, the branch networks you just described are great for older people. Will they work for millennials? What model well, is going to work for I'll millennials? Give you a, I'll give you something. That, that premise just doesn't happen to be true, at least in our case. Uh, the millennial population is about 20-odd percent. Forty percent of our accounts are opened on a given uh, quarter with millennials. Uh, uh, our millennials have today checking account deposit balances, but it's not their investment accounts, which would be a lot more, just pure checking accounts. They have with us about $140-$50 billion in deposits today. Yeah. And then the Gen, uh, Gen Z below that, under 24-year-old, 30% of our accounts open to Gen Z, and that's basically what the population is. So we over-index in terms of millennials. And so when you talk about that, you've got to go back and look that we have 27 million plus, 27.6 I think as of last Friday, current mobile customers, 37 million digital customers. And last quarter we had a billion and a half mobile logins in the quarter. So this is not like... To, you know, not small numbers. And so we have to be successful as a company and our customer focus to be able to drive down both avenues at once and build products and services which appeal to the entire customer base, including 10-year-old uh, you know, kids to 100-year-old kids and everywhere in between. Right. Now, there's been a lot of talk about disrupting the payment process. We know that retail payments, for instance, are expensive. You, you use a credit card and the merchant gets 97% and the rest goes through a lot of uh, intermediaries. Do you think that there's blockchain, Bitcoin uh, adaptations that will reduce those costs? Um, that's a big profit center, obviously, for banks. Uh, but giving that money back to retailers, on the other hand, can lead to bigger discounts, et cetera. Where is that going to go? Will the whole payments, retail payments process it's, it, it's get all, disrupted? It's all the above. You know, is it, so what really goes on today, um, Bank of America's uh, consumers through the end of May, actually through the first 10 days of June for year to date, have moved a tr trillion three in money. Checks written, cash over the ATMs, cash over the tow line, debit and credit cards, uh, Zelle, uh, uh, wires, it's other ACH, etc. A trillion three, so it's not a small number. Right. That is up 5.5% last year to show you that consumers are still spending. But importantly, 53% of that by volume today is already digitized. It's already digitally moved, and that doesn't include sticking your card in the machine. So you know, the, the business has moved digitally, and it will continue to move that way. What then happens is then to the other side is sort of what's the institutional side of receiving that, which is the merchant's uh, question or other types of payment systems. And we are driving on that hard to keep reducing that cost. And believe me, the toughest customers in the world are after you to do that, I meaning the big retailers, the big uh, uh, not only uh, – Food retailers or big, you know, general purpose retailers. Everybody's after you to kind of drive down the medical as a medical payments are more made by card. So we continue to reduce that, and so we have more, you know, uh, blockchain patents I think than anybody else does now. It's just figuring out where the value added actually changes something and actually enhances the capabilities, and where we've seen it add the most value of potentially are cross border activity with a lot of data and a lot of uh, money and trying to figure that out. And then small balance payments cross border too at the other end, and, and those ideas are all out there, and, and people are rustling the ground. But this is not there's not like no activity going on today. It's a huge amount of what goes on every day, not only for us, for us in industry. And so, if you take something like Zelle, which a colleague uh, from EWS Zelle will be out here a little later, I think, um, and she'll tell about it. But you know, basically, last year, if you take the Zelle payments of Bank of America, it's 40 odd billion dollars, 44 billion dollars in payments. To give you a sense, we are the largest sort of card coming out of wallets Google Pay, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay. That total was 4 billion last year. So 10 factor already on Zelle, and Zelle's growing at a faster rate. So the, the drop, it's going at 100% a year, basically, Zelle transactions are. So you're atomizing money, you're making it more um, uh, 
uh, available, just like the ATM did when you could go in and get 20s instead of 100s because you didn't want to stand in line just to get 20s, and suddenly 20s became the norm going out of the machine, and $40 was a lot, and you could go back. And This has all changed the way money works, but there's both a tax on both sides, and driving down the cost is a preeminent thing. And we've been driving that cost down hard uh, because we want to be we want a cashless society. It costs us five billion dollars for checks and cash to move around our company. You want to cash the society? We are driving towards a faster, but we have more to gain than anybody in a sense from a pure operating cost, and 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 so we, we're driving it, and and the cost will come down, and everything's happening, and the costs are already very low. It's very efficient, very little fraud when you actually look at the volumes going through. They seem like big numbers. That's because the U.S. economy is bigger than anybody else's economy by a lot. The U.S. consumer's economy is bigger than China's economy. So, of course, a little bit times a lot. You know, People say there's this much loss of fraud. You're saying it's so low compared to the rest of the world. But we're driving that down, too. Have you- so you heard him say twice that they want to cash the society, you know? And the man just sat here and broke down America's economy as it stands today. You know, and he broke down how much it costs to write checks and do all these things by paper and to spend cash and to to send cash and receive cash. And he broke down uh, Google, Apple Pay, you know, Zelle Payment and mobile and electronic banking, how it has brought in $4 billion alone. You know, and just imagine how much money they would bring in when the whole world switches, you know. And like he said, he said America has a big economy. You know, as he said, as he states it, America has a bigger economy than China does, you know, which... That's easily debatable, but he's thinking about how much money will flow through electronically, you know, but the ultimate secret is that's why I said we're trying to drive it. We're trying to drive it because that's going to be the new norm. And and he's and he's telling you that the big banks and the big financial industry recognize that, you know, and where do you think all of this cash is going to go? You know, because he just said we're trying to phase out ATM machines, you know. Back uh, 10, 15 years ago, $40 was a lot. And $20 became the new norm of what to carry in your wallet, you know, and what to get out of an ATM machine. Well, now, if they phase out ATM machines, what are you going to use? Because there aren't going to be any more cards. You're going to use a microchip. You're going to use a microchip. Let's just say what it is, man. They already have the technology running, you know. They already have the cryptocurrency set up to for the biometrics to uh, load onto this RFID chip, man, you know? This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 15. It says, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. You know, and the image is the philosophies and the ways of this world, you know? The culture, the gods, the, the, uh, the traditions. And he causes all, both small and great, Rich and poor, free and bond, you know, so it's everybody from this guy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Brian Moynihan, who is the CEO of Bank of America, all the way down to, you know, someone like me who has, you know, little money compared to him, you know, free and bond, those who are in prison, those who are loose, you know, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, you know, and what's causing them to receive this mark, the culture. You know, the societal norm, the the philosophies, you know, the the gods worships, the image to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, man. And that mark is going to be an RFID ship. And you got, you know, some assholes out there, you know, mainly uh, Nate, who's, who like to say, well, what if you get it in your left hand? What if you get it in your, in, in your butt cheek? This isn't a game, man. And the Lord put put a clause in Revelation to, uh, the uh, the fourteenth chapter, man. You know, which I'll read later. I mean, start slacking. Like, yeah. Uh, not Revelation fourteen chapter, but in Revelation twenty one first chapter, which I'm not going to read. But um, he said, you know, these are the souls of those that are beheaded. You know, for not uh, getting the mark of the beast in both their in both of their hands. You know. So the Lord knew there are going to be guys like you that like to that just like to talk shit and folly, man. And this is not a joke, you know. They already have something called the brain machine interface, you know, which which interfaces your mind, your cerebral cortex, and hooks it up to a microchip, man. You know. That's why they have uh, the electronic prosthetic arms now, you know. That's why they have TV shows like Intelligence and 
like uh, Mr. Robot, and they show you what these different applications can do, you know? I was just watching a show the other day called, um, what was it called? Was it, I think it was a blacklist, and the guy was an ex-soldier, and, you know, he had his arm blown off, and uh, he had surgery, and the next thing you know, he had a prosthetic arm, and he was controlling with his mind, you know? That's be that's that's because they put the microchip in his brain, you know, and he's controlling it with his thoughts, and his thoughts are sending electrical signals, you know, from his brain into that technology, which is controlling the arm, man. You know how much more for your inf your social security card and your information and your and your money transactions, you know. You just heard the man say out of his own mouth that they want to cash the society, they want to get rid of ATMs, you know. It's it's costing them more money than what it's bringing in, you know. It says, verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, said he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You know, so you won't be able to buy or sell without this mark because they're taking ATMs away. He wants to take cash away. Society is going to be cashless. So if you don't have an RFID chip, you know, that has that, that currency loaded on it from your direct deposits and your assets and your investments and things like that, then you won't be able to buy anything. Because there's no cash circulating around anymore. You know, so how are you going to eat? How are you going to survive? You know? Well, the men of the Lord are going to survive off of the faith of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. You know? The scriptures say his servants shall eat. You know? So I'm not at all worried about this in the least. But, verse 18, it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is a number of a man. You know, so... Cut to the Christian church. This ain't a, a giant dragon come out of Lake Michigan, man. You know, and coming to devour people that have uh, the 666 stamped on their foreheads. You know, this is a number of a man, which is a so-called white man, Esau Edom, man. And his number is 603 score and 6. And that's the number of the universal product code. And that's on, that number is in all transactions all over the world. That number is in every barcode all over the world. You send money, you receive money. Six 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 is is embedded in the code of the trans of that transaction. You know, if you you know brothers that have worked retail, you know, and things like that, know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, and to prove it, you know that uh, because I've you know they have numerous articles on you know Bitcoin and and different currencies like uh, Ripple and stuff like that being loaded onto the RFID chip. You know, but they have a specific which I just ran into this this morning, they have a specific um, coin, cryptocurrency called BiChip. I'm just going to, this is from the uh, white paper from the BiChip uh, Buy website. It says, What's, what is BiChip coin? We've built BiChip crypto coin to buy and sell our products. We are a Danish human and animal bio microchip company. You know, and if anybody knows, the RFID chip was first um, used in computers and cell phones, and then they started use it's called LoJack, and then they started putting it, implanting it in your your pets, like your dogs and cats and things like that, to you know detect you know if you if they were to run away or get lost, you can find them again. If somebody steals your steals your computer, steals your phone. Now what do they have? They have something called Find My iPhone, which is just nothing but LoJack rebranded, right? It says, and we have created next generation of blockchain microchips that make it possible to keep your wallets under your skin and pay for shoppings by wave of your hand. You know, this is technology that they already have in place. Now, you know, who's to say that Bitcoin, you know, isn't going to be the, the biggest cryptocurrency forever? Because when you look on Coinbase's website, you know, I do follow cryptocurrency pretty heavily um, but when you look on coinbase's website which is one of the biggest uh, wholesalers of cryptocurrency when you look into coinbase's website coinbase has matter of fact I'll just go there coinbase has something called USD coin and what USD coin is US dollar coin so they already have it set up to to Conform the US dollar into a digital asset. Matter of fact, see if I can. There we go, USD coin. A 
cryptocurrency with a stable price. So basically, I can't really click on anything here. Let's see if I can pull it up. There we go. So cryptocurrency with a stable price. What is USD coin? USD coin or USDC is a type of cryptocurrency that is referred to as a stable coin, meaning it's backed by real money. You can always redeem one USD coin for one US dollar, giving it a stable price. Now you go down here to the uh, to the cons, I mean to the pros <laughs> and cons. It says for customers, stable value for customers with a US dollar bank account, one US dollar coin can always be redeemed for one US dollar, giving it a stable price. Now this sounds what, like what? Sounds like back in the day when you had the greenbacks that were created by Abraham Lincoln, you can go and redeem that dollar for a certain amount of gold because it was backed by gold. So they're bringing that back, but in a digital currency fashion. It says, backed by US dollars. Each USDC is backed by one US dollar, which is held in a bank account. It says, powered by Ethereum, which Ethereum coin is uh, basically the, the network that this US, US dollar is on. But going here to global transactions, it says global transactions. USD coin is designed to let dollars move globally from your crypto wallet to other exchanges, businesses, and people. You know, so they already have the US currency set up to go digital, man. You know, so what more proof do you need for you people that, that claim that the RFID chip is not real, that the microchip is not the mark of the beast? You know, and this is how they're going to market it to you, man. If you go back to the buy chip website here, it says, in this secure, smart, and easy-to-use platform, that's 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 the, that's the hook, you know, that's the trap right there. It's convenient. You're able to buy as much crypto tokens as you need, you know. And there's a whole video here, you know. This is buy chip uh, dot store, but they are gearing up for this whole mass uh, currency migration, man. You know, it's impossible for anyone to not see this, you know. This is Romans chapter 3, verse 3. It says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? Meaning, are the things that are written in the, in the book not going to come to pass? Just because you don't believe? That don't mean anything, man. You know? That doesn't mean jack shit. You know? Whatever the Lord says is going to come to pass is going to come to pass, man. So just because Nate doesn't believe that the mark of the beast is a microchip, you know, which I believe that he knows. You know, I believe that he's he's not stupid. You know, these all these people that claim to, you know, uh, advocate against the mark of the beast, they're not stupid, man. They're not brain dead. They understand that this is what it is. They're trying not to scare their congregation. You know, that's what it is. But that doesn't mean that this isn't going to happen, man. It is happening. We are closer. The scriptures say our salvation is nearer than we believe, man. You know, matter of fact, because if you read, you know, uh, more down in this article here, um, I read that there was another um, financial advisor that was saying that, you know, eventually you will, they'll get a microchip, you know, or if it was another article, excuse me, um, it was called you will get chipped eventually. And they were saying that, you know, you're going to get chipped eventually. It might not, he, and he, he thinks that it won't happen in his lifetime, you know, but he said definitely his kids will see it, you know, and he said, uh, he said, you know, the next 10 years it might not happen, but who knows, you know, I, I can see it happening in the next two to three, you know, I can see it happening tomorrow, you know, so for what if some did not believe shall their unbelief make the faith of the most high without effect, you know, God forbid. You know, meaning hell no. Yea, let God the Most High be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. You know, and the men of the Lord that are teaching what the true mark of the beast is, man, you know, are justified, you know, so that our faith can help us overcome in this day, in the day, you know, of trouble, man, you know. Because this is coming. This is going to tempt a lot of brothers, man. And it is. You know? It's going to tempt me too. You know? 
we're not 100% exempt from being tempted. You know, those demons are going to come. But like the scriptures say, we might that, you know, we are justified in our sayings that we might overcome, you know, when we're judged. You know, and this is going to end up being a judgment of this of this microchip, man. You know, we are to overcome this. This is Revelation 14 and 9. It says, and the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. You know, so the Lord is going to be, you know, upset is an understatement, you know, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone, meaning the thermonuclear missiles. You will have a missile with your name on it. In the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up for forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night. Who worship the beast in his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. You know. So you receive the mark of the beast man. You have you know you have pain. And you have pain reserved for you. You know. You have pain reserved for you. You know, in a form of a ballist, intercontinental ballistic missile, man. You know, that's the uh, that's the end game. You know, for those that receive the mark of the beast, man. You know, the mark of the beast is the RFID chip, without a doubt, man. You know, so with that, you know, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Rakakudash, that were honest to the apostles and elders of Barry Milson were well. And salutations to the brethren on the four corners of the earth, pushing the word and truth and insincerity. Shalom.